Let's wait till they sit I haven't down. heard the voice of God. Let's wait till they okay. sit down. Voice of God. Um. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et Monsieur, on Thursday, the Queen of Canada, Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, passed. We will honor her and her service to the people of Canada throughout this evening. Jeudi, la Reine du Canada, First Sa Majesté, Reine Elizabeth II, est décédée. Nous lui rendrons hommage et noterons ses services au peuple canadien tout au long de cette soirée. Please welcome your MCs, the Honorable Deb Gray and the Vice President of the National Council, Valérie Assouline. Veuillez accueillir les vos maîtres de cérémonie, l'honorable Deb Gray et la vice-présidente de l'exécutif national, Maître Valérie Assouline. Good evening. Could you please take your seats? Thank you. To honor the memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, please join us all in a moment of silence. Pour honorer Sa Majesté la Reine Elizabeth II, veuillez vous joindre à nous pour un moment de silence. Thank you. Please remain standing, and I would like to invite uh, Rosemary Siemens and Eli Bennett. They've been playing music for us earlier. They are going to do an instrumental rendition of God Save the King. Veuillez vous lever, si possible, pour une version instrumentale de l'hymne royal Dieu protège le roi par Rosemary Siemens et Eli Bennett.
What a royal send-off to Her Majesty. That was fantastic. The Queen was uh, named Queen on February 6, 1952. I was born July 1, 1952, and so I've been thrilled that we've celebrated all our special anniversaries together. And I was so sad to hear the news, but what a wonderful, wonderful Queen she has been to us. Please remain standing and join fem our former Member of Parliament, and the CPC Leadership Election Organizing Committee that Valerie and I both sat on, a LEOC member, former MP Nellie Shin, for the singing of O Canada. Veuillez rester debout et accueillir Nellie Shin, députée de 2019 à 2021, et membre du comité organisateur de l'élection du chef pour interpréter notre hymne national. She wouldn't tell you this, but Nellie played the music in the background for her to sing. So another hand for Nellie. Yeah. Wonderful. Good evening, fellow Conservatives, and good evening, fellow Canadians. Bonjour, chers amis. This is a, a great day and it's been a busy time. Yes, please be seated. On behalf of our conservative family, we also offer our heartfelt thoughts and prayers to the victims and their families of last weekend's horrific events. We want to let people of Saskatchewan know that we are thinking about you. We, thank you so much. We also wish to acknowledge that we are gathered here in Ottawa, built on unceded Ashinaabe Algonquin territory. Thank you. We're pleased to be joined by our party's vice president and the vice chair of LEOC, Valerie Assolin, my fellow co-chair, and our member. Yes, yes, let's Thank give you. her a hand. Thank you. Valerie, we served together on LEOC, and our members present here, many of you, and, and lots more looking in from across the country. Excited to meet our new leader tonight. Bonsoir, chers amis. Je suis heureuse de partager cette soirée avec toi, Deb, et heureuse d'être avec vous ici en présentiel et à travers le Canada. Merci. 
Je tiens également à offrir mes condoléances aux victimes, leurs familles, aux gens de la Saskatchewan et du Canada qui ont aussi le cœur brisé. Nous sommes tous avec vous pour nous offrir une bénédiction autochtone. Veuillez accueillir Léonard Hodgick. A retired administrator and an Algonquin elder from Kitigan Zibi, about an hour north of Ottawa here, our guest was appointed by the Government of Canada as a director of the First Nations Financial Management Board, and he's part of many other Aboriginal organizations. Please welcome with us Elder Leonard Ojik. Ladies and gentlemen, Aboriginal people that are in attendance, Kwe. Bonjour à tout le monde, mes amis francophones. Good evening to everyone. Already being in introduced, it's an honor for me because I'm a proud Canadian Aboriginal person. It's an honor for me to be the first. Thank you. It's an honor for me to be the first to be asked by the party, Conservative Party of Canada to come and welcome you to the Aboriginal Algonquin traditional unceded territories. This land that we are on, this specific land, is like the Algonquin capital to us. My ancestors would come down from the trap lines in early spring from all over our land and come and meet at this very spot. We had two very important things to get done. One was the fertile ground to grow our crops that we needed to survive the harsh winters ahead. But more important, we held government as you hold government. We dealt with a lot of people ask, well, what did your government deal with? You were Aboriginal savages. Like, we dealt with trade negotiations, elections, justice, environment. Our trap lines had to be well taken care of because if we didn't take care of the environment, we would not survive. Uh, I could talk on and on but I'm sort of limited on time, and I really appreciate being offered the time to be with you. It's a truly honor for me, and I hope that we continue in the future to include Aboriginal people to participate in your gatherings. With that, I pray. I pray for the simple things in life, water, the air that we breathe, we take for granted. I also pray and thank the Creator for Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people that we are able and given the pleasure and the privilege to live in the greatest country in the world. I also ask the Creator to give as much support as the new members can to your new elected leader and your new party. Not new party, but your party. I believe that in unity there is strength, and we need a strong Conservative Party. Juste une coupe de mots vite faite pour nos, euh, la population francophone. Euh, j'aimerais euh, pas répéter tout ce que j'ai dit, mais j'aimerais dire que on est chanceux de vivre dans le plus beau pays au monde. Puis aussi qu'on est, euh, on, on a un privilège. C'est un privilège qu'on peut pas prendre pour acquis. Euh, merci. Megwedge. Kangutsnan.
Thank you so much, Mr. Ojek, for those uh, moving words and an offering to you to say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Well, our next speaker is known to Conservatives right across Canada. She's a former Minister of Health and the Environment, Member of Parliament for Nunavut. You know who that is. <clears throat> she currently represents Nunavut on National Council, and we have had the pleasure of working with her on LEOC as well. Please join me in welcoming the Honourable Leona Aglukak, our friend and colleague. <clears throat> Unusakut, koyan na mita mani kun na fi unu. Hivulak tikut hat kita otin na akit lugo tungasung na kusi. Her late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, has passed. We wish to pay homage to her devoted dedication and service throughout her life to the people of Canada the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth, and the rest of the world. Her late majesty leaves behind an incredible legacy which will stand the test of time as well our late majesty's comforting words in difficult moments throughout the history of her reign. The Queen's clear love and affection for the women and men of Canadian Armed Forces was obvious during her numerous visits to Canada, including four times to the Canadian Arctic. Along with her patronage of so many military, civic, and charitable organizations across our great country, which Her Late Majesty considered her second home. Simply put, her late majesty loved Canada, and Canadians loved her back. Although the queen stood above politics, her late majesty supported the democratic process throughout her life. She and her representatives opened parliaments and provincial legislatures. Together, she and her representatives gave royal assents to our legislation. Her advice and her wisdom was sought by many prime ministers. Given her late majesty's steadfast support for democracy everywhere, we are confident that in that spirit, we can proceed with our announcement tonight. Mm -hmm. to elect a new leader who will become the leader of His Majesty loyal opposition in a week's time. When Parliament reconvenes to recognize Her Late Majesty's passing and her succession according to law. We pledge to continue to support Her Late Majesty and her family in this period of mourning and offer our most sincere condolences to her family and loved ones. May she rest in peace. Merci, Leona, pour tes beaux mots. Sa Majesté, la Reine Elisabeth II, nous a quittés. Nous souhaitons lui rendre hommage pour son dévouement et à son re service remarquable tout au long de sa vie envers les peuples du Canada, du Royaume-Uni, du Commonwealth et du reste du monde. Sa Majesté nous laisse un incroyable héritage qui demeurera dans notre mémoire collective, non seulement pour son dévouement et son service, mais également en tant qu'exemple extraordinaire pour toutes les femmes du monde, tout comme ses paroles réconfortantes lors de moments difficiles pendant son règne. Nous offrons nos sincères condoléances à sa famille et ses proches qu'elle repose en paix. Thank you, Leona, and thank you, Valerie, for those beautiful words. 
King Charles III was formally proclaimed as our king this very moment, this morning. Please help us congratulate and celebrate His Majesty King yep. Charles III. Forgive me, I, like probably every one of you, are going to take a while to get used to that. God save the King. And now on this historic day in so many ways, we're here together to announce and celebrate our new leader and thank our past leaders. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! As we all know, and we need to tell the rest of the country, that there's more that unites us than divides us as a yeah. party. Absolutely. We all want the same thing, a strong and prosperous Canada, and a party that will keep its promises. Yeah. How about a campaign platform they can believe in and trust, not the one that belongs in the fiction section of the local library, like past liberal red books? <laughs> I have some experience with some of those liberal red books, if you could remember that far back. On this conservative team, folks, it doesn't matter what position you play. Whether you play left wing, center ice, or right wing, we are all on the same team. And we have one opponent only. Yeah. 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 We have one only opponent, and you know who it is. It's the unholy alliance of Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh. You know, Christia may have the pearls and hold the purse strings, but make no mistake, Jagmeet has the power. He's deputy prime minister, and now he's saying that he might just have to pull the plug on the whole deal. Well, it's, it, you, you wonder about it. You wonder who's chicken and chicken little in this sweet deal, don't you then? They're scared to call an election, but we can't wait. The sooner the better. <laughs> you are not surprised to know that being a politician isn't easy at the best of times. Trust me, been there. I know that, and I thought about it the other day when I was on a long plane ride to Ottawa. I thought, I remember what this feels like. I've been there. It is a rewarding job, though, and we are so thankful for people that step forward to take those jobs. But it's tough. It's hard on family. It's hard on loved ones. Just today, my husband Lou phoned me right before I left the hotel and said, Deb, he was on his way to see his mom, and a big, huge deer just jumped out, just smacked our car. I'm so glad he's okay, but boy, did I feel a long way away. I wanted to be there to hug him, and I bet he wanted me to be there to hug him back. Our car is in Manitoba right now. We've been on a road trip, and we have to drive it. He thinks he could tape it together for us to drive home to <laughs> Vancouver Island. Yeah, watch for that, okay? It's coming soon. I'm sure it'll be on the national news. But we are so grateful, those of us in elected life, to have people that stand beside us and support us. And I want to say thank you to all those people who support members of parliament. Sure. Before her election, just last year, as Member of Parliament for Hastings, Lennox and Addington in Eastern Ontario, Shelby Cramp Nyman worked as an educator, a small business person and a municipal councillor. Oh, plus she's a wife and a mother of two daughters. Shelby savait en quelque sorte dans quoi elle s'embarquait parce qu'elle vient d'une famille politique. Son père, Darrell Cramp, a été député à Ottawa et député provincial en Ontario. Sans doute que Shelby applique certaines des leçons qu'elle a apprises de sa mère et de son père. Mais Shelby façonne maintenant son chemin à sa façon en tant que la ministre du cabinet fantôme responsable des aînés et la voix des députés au sein du COEC. 
Rick Perkins is another member of Parliament, the Conservative Caucus, and just got elected in the class of 2021. Elected just last year as Member of Parliament for South Shore St. Margaret's in Nova Scotia, Rick made national news by defeating one of Justin Cabinet members. Yeah. Oh, yes! <laughs> Having defeated Trudeau's fisheries minister, Rick was appointed Conservative Shadow Minister of Fisheries, Oceans and the Canadian Coast Guard. Rick a rencontré son épouse Wendy alors qu'ils travaillaient tous les deux sur la colline parlementaire dans les années 80 pour le gouvernement de Brian Mulroney et a par la suite été cadre supérieur d'entreprise. So please join us now in welcoming the member for, of Parliament for Hastings, Lennox and Addington, Shelby Cramp Nyman et le député de South Shore, St. Margaret, Rick Perkins. Hey, girl. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you, Deb and Valerie. Merci. Rick and I are so proud to be here with you this evening to say thank you to Aaron O'Toole for his dedication to our party and his tireless work as our leader. We also want to thank Rebecca, Molly and Jack for supporting Aaron during his tenure as leader. While politics can be taxing on politicians, we must never forget the sacrifices that our families and loved ones make, allowing us to serve this great country. As was said in our introduction, Shelby and I are two of the 21 new MPs elected last year under Aaron's leadership. It's been quite a year. No matter how many years we each serve our respective constituents in the House of Commons, it will be hard to forget our first victory and the critical role Aaron as leader played in our first election. Pour nous, le leadership d'Aaron a été une partie importante de nos victoires. Aaron a consacré une grande partie de sa vie adulte à servir le Canada. D'abord comme membre des Forces armées canadiennes pendant 12 ans, puis comme député, il représente sa ville natale de Durham à la Chambre des communes depuis 2012. Aujourd'hui, Aaron travaille toujours aussi fort pour que le Canada soit le meilleur pays possible. Serving as fellow Canadian... Sure. Serving his fellow Canadians has always been important to Aaron, as he co-founded, after his military service, the True Patriot Love Foundation, the largest Canadian charity dedicated to serving veterans and military families across Canada. Aaron was able to continue helping veterans when Prime Minister Stephen Harper asked him to serve as Minister of Veterans Affairs and use his network and his experience to turn around the department. Aaron, continue. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Aaron, continue a militer uh, vigorously à la Chambre de Commune pour des mesures et politiques solides, à la fois pour nous anciens combattants et pour notre défense nationale. Rick and I would like to thank Aaron, Rebecca, Molly and Jack for their dedication to our movement. The O'Toole's have shown tremendous passion for the future of this party and the potential of what Canada can aspire to become both here and abroad. I echo Shelby's comments and would like to give a special Nova Scotia shout out to my fellow Nova Scotian, Rebecca, for her support through Aaron's public life and to our adopted Nova Scotian, Aaron, who bravely rescued those in trouble on the sea all over my riding and Nova Scotia during his time in the Air Force. Yours is a life of service to Canada in the military, in Parliament, and as leader of our party. Au nom de notre caucus parti, et de tous les Canadiens et toutes les Canadiens, je vous remercie Erin, Rebecca, Molly, and Jack for two. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to our screens 
for a word from Aaron via video. Thank you, Shelby and Rick, for your kind words. You're both outstanding members of Parliament and great friends. My fellow Conservatives and those Canadians watching tonight, I would like to thank you for your recognition this evening and for the distinct privilege I had being leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. The sudden passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has hit our family hard, like it has millions around the world. Her service above self is an inspiration to us all, and I hope her family and our friends in the United Kingdom find solace in that. I want to begin by tonight repeating what I said in my final speech as leader. Being elected to represent my community in Parliament and becoming leader of the Conservative Party has been the honour of a lifetime. For a kid from Bowmanville raised to value service, to get the chance to serve his country during a challenging time has been a true blessing. For too short a time, I had the privilege of leading the Party of Confederation, a party of important policies, of relentless progress, and of steadfast principle. A party that throughout our history has helped forge the incredible country we cherish today. I want to thank Canadians from coast to coast to coast for the unique privilege of being invited into their lives. Whether it was thanking veterans for their service in a coffee shop in Doaktown, New Brunswick, or learning about compassionate addiction treatment at the Last Door Recovery Centre in New Westminster, BC, or serving meals to the hungry alongside tireless volunteers at a Sikh Gudwara in Brampton, Ontario. My love for this country has deepened the more I saw its citizens in action. I am inspired by the true patriot love of Canadians who work hard, provide for their family, and help their neighbour. Their quiet confidence is the source of our country's true greatness. C'était pour moi un honneur de diriger le Parti conservateur du Canada et de rencontrer des Canadiens et Canadiennes de partout au pays, de l'Est à l'Ouest, de la pêche sur le fjord de Saguenay et au dire de Infoman que j'avais le meilleur plan. C'était un privilège de rencontrer autant de Québécois et des Canadiens francophones qui me parlaient de leurs inquiétudes. Je tiens à remercier les millions de Canadiens qui ont démontré leur confiance en moi et en notre plan pour le pays. My friends, the Conservative Party needs to be united behind our next leader because our country needs unity more than ever before. The Conservative Party needs to be compassionate because Canadians need to be heard and need to be understood more than ever before. And the Conservative Party needs to be strong not with the strength to overpower our rivals, but with the strength of character needed to carry those in need or those who are losing faith in our country. Conservatives must put the unity of our country first because the fabric of our federation has been stretched thin over the last few years. Loss, fear, uncertainty. The pandemic came to our shores three years ago as a health crisis, but has transformed into a political crisis. Dislocation and frustrations are eroding trust, weakening our institutions, and harming our democracy. Social media makes it easier than ever before for millions of people to hear you speak, but harder than ever to convince others to listen. A strong, compassionate, and united Conservative Party can ensure that all voices are heard and begin the process of stitching the country back together. Nous avons besoin d'une parti conservateur uni qui donnera la priorité à l'avenir de notre pays. Nous devons guérir les divisions dans ce pays et nous devons avoir l'unité et non la division. Les Canadiens au Québec et partout au pays ont besoin d'une équipe conservatrice forte, professionnelle et unie. So it is up to our party to always put the country first from every grassroots member of our party to every elected member of parliament, we must put the unity of Canada first. Because then we can show Canadians that with unity, there is prosperity for the small business owner in Nova Scotia to the oil patch worker in Alberta. With unity, there is dignity for the family who just arrived on our shores or an indigenous family on the path to reconciliation. With unity, there is also hope 
for the nurse returning to the hospital front lines, or for the recent graduate heading out into the workforce. And we can show Canadians that with unity, there is greatness. From the brave exploits of those in uniform to the unsung heroism of the local food bank volunteer. We are a great country, and we should never be scared to shout that from the rooftops. And to my Conservative friends, remember, where there is unity, there is always victory. So let's show Canadians a united, strong, and compassionate Conservative Party. I wish the next leader fair winds and following seas as they take the helm. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. another LEOC member and a candidate for our party in Manitoba during the last election and the founding president of the Manitoba chapter of the Association of Black Conservatives, Shola Agbula, for a special announcement. Shola. Veuillez accueillir notre collègue du comité organisateur de l'élection du chef et ancien candidat au Manitoba lors de la dernière élection, Shola Agbula, pour une annonce spéciale. As a candidate for our great party in Manitoba during the last federal election, under the leadership of Erin O'Toole, and as a funding president of the Manitoba chapter of the Association of Black Conservatives in Canada, I can say without any equivocation, any ambiguity or any doubt that conservatives need to be and we must be united to win the next election. <laughs> Canadians are looking for us to present a credible, a credible, progressive and good plan for Canada to reach our full potential. They know, Canadians know, that Canada can be, can do, and must be better than this. Together, as united Conservatives, we are the credible alternative that this great country needs. And Erin, you've served our country and you've served the party diligently and you continue to do so. Your passion for our party to excel motivate many like myself to get involved and do our part to make this country greater for all. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II was dedicated to helping others through our various charities, to honor our commitment to charitable causes, and to thank Aaron Otu and his family for their service and dedication to our party, both before, during, and after Aaron's time as a leader. It is my honor to announce tonight that the Conservative Party of Canada will be making a donation in the name of Erin, Rebecca, Molly, and Jack O'Toole to the True Patriot Love Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shola. I think it's fair to say this next speaker has had a lot of work in his two plus years as president. 
Rob Batherson, you have a very understanding wife. <laughs> Dans les 18 mois en tant que président de notre parti, il a été très occupé. Il a dû naviguer dans une élection générale et une course à la chefferie. C'est un homme que j'admire et que j'aime beaucoup. Veuillez accueillir le président de votre exécutif national, M. Rob Batterson. Merci, Valérie. Thank you, Deb. Folks, we made it. As we gather as Conservatives tonight, like Canadians from coast to coast to coast, our friends in the United Kingdom and people around the world, we are here with heavy hearts on the loss of Her Majesty the Queen. Elizabeth II is the only head of state that most Canadians have ever known. We celebrate her commitment to Canada, her lifetime of service, and the example she set for us all. Twenty years ago, in her annual Christmas broadcast, Her Majesty said, each day is a new beginning. I know that the only way to live my life is to try to do what is right, to take the long view, to give of my best in all that the day brings, and to put my trust in God. One of the Conservative Party's guiding principles is a belief in the constitutional monarchy, the institutions of Parliament, and the democratic process. Tonight, we are doing our part to support Canada's constitutional monarchy, the institutions of Parliament, and the democratic process. As we mourn the passing of Her Majesty the Queen and mark the beginning of a new reign of His Majesty the King, Charles III, we follow the example she set. To live our life, to do what is right, take the long view, and give our best in all that the day brings. En annonçant les résultats de l'élection de notre nouveau ou nouvelle chef, il y a beaucoup de gens de reconnaître ce soir. Nos cinq candidats et leurs équipes de campagne. <applaudissements> Mes collègues tous bénévoles de l'exécutif national. Absolument. Mes collègues encore tout bénévoles au comité organisateur de l'élection du chef présidé par Ian Brody. Le personnel au bureau national mené par notre directeur général, mon ami Wayne Benson. Les parlementaires du Parti conservateur, les députés et les sénateurs qui travaillent au nom des Canadiennes et Canadiens. Later in our program, we will say thank you to my friend and a, and a friend to many in our conservative movement, our outgoing leader, the Honourable Candace Bergen. To the 278,000-plus Canadians who are members of the Conservative Party, thank you for stepping up to participate in Canadian democracy. You have a home in our party. Vous êtes chez vous au Parti conservateur. Absolument, peu importe votre choix. Peu importe votre choix numéro un dans cette course à la chefferie, le Parti conservateur a besoin de vous. Votre implication, votre énergie, votre engagement pour un meilleur pays. To every Conservative Party member, get more involved in your party this fall. Get active in your local electoral district association. That's how we build a better party, a party Canadians can count on to build a better country. <laughs> Friends, that's why the work we do to elect the next Conservative leader matters. One of our guiding principles, spelled out in the Constitution of the modern Conservative Party that Stephen Harper and Peter McKay forged together in the 2003 merger. Let's thank Prime Minister Harper and Peter McKay. Absolutely.
Part of their legacy is that our Conservative Party is a coalition. Today, our Conservative coalition is larger than it has ever been. But coalition building is not just the work of the Conservative leaders we elect. Co coalition building depends on each and every one of us to respect and embrace our differences as Conservatives, to invite people in, not turn them away, to focus on what we agree on to build a better Canada. Let us resolve to put aside the differences that occur in any leadership race. Let us unite for change, the change that Canada leads. Let us... <laughs> Each and every one of us, let us support our new leader, a new Conservative leader who tonight will be elected through the largest Democratic vote of any political party in Canadian history. Conservateur et conservatrice, l'union fait la force. Ensemble, unis, on va gagner. Canada wins, Canadians win, when conservatives win. Thank you. Merci. Bravo. Thanks. Bravo. Thank you, Rob. I've known our next speaker for more years than I care to admit to. You know, when I tell people stories about back when I was in office, they think, for goodness sakes, here's a living museum piece talking to us. <laughs> but I, I've known this guy for a long time. He's been a presence throughout our party's history, serving as the Conservative Party of Canada's first president of National Council, helping navigate the early years of our United Party. Le sénateur Plett a été nommé au Sénat sur les conseils du très honorable Stephen Harper en août 2009. Il a occupé de nombreux postes, notamment celui de whip de notre caucus sénatorial et de chef de l'opposition au Sénat depuis 2019. Le sénateur Plett et moi avons été collègues au sein du comité organisateur de l'élection du chef de 2020. To thank the Honourable Candice Bergen for her service, amazing service, as, yeah. that, as interim leader, He's going to thank her and present a video in your honour, Candace. That'll be special. I love it. Please welcome her fellow Manitoban, Senator Don Platt. Don. Well, merci and thank you, Deb and Valerie. And good evening, fellow Conservatives. Bonsoir, cher ami. Comme ça va? What a great night to be a Conservative, friends. I also want to begin my comments by acknowledging the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Her lifelong service to her country and the Commonwealth will remain a shining example of selfless duty and devotion and I wish to pass on my sincere condolences to the royal family at this time. The loss of such a long-standing monarch is indeed sad. But tonight, friends, I have the privilege, I have the privilege of introducing a very, very good friend of mine and a great friend of the Conservative Party of Canada. The Honourable Candace Bergen and I met for the first time some 20 years ago in 2002, when Candace was working as a volunteer for the Canadian Alliance Party in a by-election in St. Boniface, Manitoba. I, at that time, was a member of the Canadian Alliance National Council. We worked together during that campaign, during that by-election, and quickly became friends for life. It has been a true pleasure for me to deal with Candace and work with Candace in all the roles that she has taken on in our party. From being a volunteer, 
to running for the Conservative Party of Canada in the riding of Portage Lisgar when that opportunity presented itself in 2008, to being a cabinet minister in a strong Stephen Harper majority government. <laughs> to then being the opposition house leader, for four years Candace was the opposition house leader, both under the uh, leadership of the Honourable Rana Ambrose and then under the leadership of the Honourable Andrew Scheer. Then being the deputy leader of our party under the Honourable Aaron O'Toole. And for the last seven months, and Candace doesn't like to be called the interim leader, she likes to be called the leader in the interim. <laughs> and that is what she has been. I am asked often, and I did this just a while ago when I was speaking to a group of interns uh, in, the, in the Senate of Canada building, uh, and I get asked, how can I get involved in politics? Candace is a leading example for all Canadians who are looking to get engaged. She started as a volunteer, and with skills and devotion, she created a remarkable path or herself, one that led to one of the highest positions in our country, the leader of the loyal opposition. <laughs> Candace has shown her strength and her abilities in each and every role and each and every decision that she has made. She is not only a great speaker, but more importantly, she is a great listener, someone that has listened to your concerns as well as mine, someone who has listened to the concerns of the members of the Conservative Party of Canada, to the Conservative Caucus, and has acted on them. Candace is a peacemaker, something she comes by honestly, being of Mennonite heritage. Now, I'm also of Mennonite heritage. And I have never quite had the same gifts as a peacemaker as Candace Bergen has had. The Conservative family has benefited greatly from her peacemaking abilities. With everyone here tonight, I wish to take an opportunity to thank her for that. Friends, Candace has achieved in our caucus what had not been achieved in quite some time, and that is complete party unity. A unity that will be passed on to a new leader later on this evening. A unity that will be able to be taken by the new leader as he or she moves our party forward to winning the next election. This is no small feat, as you think of leading a Conservative caucus. Conservatives inherently are not followers, they are leaders. And Candace has done a remarkable job of bringing us all together. We have not only become colleagues, Candace, you and I have become lifelong friends. Betty and I look forward to spending more time with you and Mike at the lake, as your place is just down the street from ours. You are a true friend of the Conservative Party of Canada, Candace. It has been an honor to serve in caucus under your leadership. Thank you very much. offrir une opposition forte et unie au gouvernement libéral et être la voix de tous les Canadiens, sans exception. Au nom de tous mes collègues, Monsieur le Président, je peux dire sans me tromper qu'elle a réussi sur toute la ligne. Candace, you step up when the country needed you. 
When you took over as leader, you inherited a really badly divided caucus. You've taken a very diverse group of MPs, brought them together, refocused and reunited us to do what we need to do as the official opposition. Your leadership and dedication in keeping the party united is greatly appreciated. You were the right person at the right time. You were successful in uniting us into a high-performing team. You know how to build good teams, and that's a skill in itself. When critics said it would be impossible to hold things together, you proved them wrong. Starting off in the class of 2008 as an MP, to a committee chair, parliamentary secretary, cabinet minister, house leader, deputy leader, culminating in the past few months, as our leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. You've done such a great job in that time. You've been a pillar of strength for our party these last six months. You did a great job in a trying time. You did an amazing job. You did it with such great class. Well done. You've proudly represented Manitoba and all of Canada. You've challenged us to always do what is right and stand for Conservative principles. In question period, you outmatched the Prime Minister each time he decided to show up for work. You've given the Prime Minister no days off. Your character, your common sense, your compassion while you led us, your steady hand, positive attitude and strong performance have served us well. Working under your leadership has been the highlight of my career. Effective leadership is leaving something better than you found it and that will certainly be your legacy. It's so nice to have a leader who really appreciates the, the people who are in the party. And allowing members to express themselves freely on matters that are important to Canadians. You've also maintained an approachability that I've personally appreciated uh, when I've come to you and when I've even brought your constituents to you. If you want to change the world, go home and love your family. And I felt that's what you did with caucus. Which is precisely why the party and movement are in a better place. You are not only a leader, an inspiration and a mentor to our caucus and especially the women in our caucus, but also to women and girls across the country. I admire and respect you as a friend, a colleague and a great Canadian. I've always said that you are the heart and soul of our party. Is a testimony of the type of person that you are. You have so much to be proud of. You were a steady hand and a principled leader. You have united our caucus. You've worked really hard, we really appreciated it, and you made it fun. But most of all, you never forget who it is you're fighting for. The people here, and across Canada. And you certainly left us in a great position with the new leader coming forward because of all your hard work. And for that, all of us are thankful for your leadership. Merci pour tout ton travail comme chef intérimaire. Merci infiniment, Candace. For the way that you have served caucus and served our party. For everything you've done to bring everybody together through very difficult times. For votre leadership pendant cette période de transition, votre résilience et de nous mener à bon port dans ce choix pour un nouveau leader. Merci d'avoir avoir pris la relève en attendant notre futur chef. Many thanks for your time, your friendly listening. For being our fearless leader for the last six months. For keeping us united and focused on holding the government to account. For helping us to move our conservative movement forward. For your contribution to forming the next conservative government staying calm in the face of much adversity. As we came out of COVID and dealt with all of the issues of an incompetent government. Very much appreciated the confidence that you had in a rookie year. You've studied the ship and you were certainly a leader for a time such as this. Nous avons été très chanceux et privilégiés de t'avoir comme chef intérimaire dans cette période qui n'était pas facile pour personne. Really appreciate what you and Michael have done for us just uh, carrying us through this uh, bit of a trying time as a party. Je suis très heureux de travailler avec toi, tu es une femme extraordinaire. I'd like to thank you very, very much to helping me to serve all those nice people from my riding. The membership was proud to say that you are their leader. Coast to coast to coast, conservatives all over Canada say thank you as well. I'm looking forward to work with you this fall in the House of Commons. I look forward to continuing to serve alongside you as we get back to Parliament this fall. And after the next election, when we're in government. And defeat the Trudeau Liberals and bring common sense and good governance back to this country. And I can't wait for what your next achievements in public life are going to be. Anyways, thanks so much. It's all good. All the best to you. Thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, please help me in welcoming our leader, the leader in the interim, the Honorable Candace Bergen. Thank 
you very much. So nice. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. I, um, I do want to begin by saying how saddened I am at the passing of our beloved Queen, Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. She served with honour. She really was our Queen. And I have no doubt that her place will be as great as that of Queen Victoria in the story of Canada. May we all, friends, may we all strive to emulate the dignity and the grace that she personified throughout. Michael and I are praying and are thinking of the royal family during this time. Long live the King. Wow. Thank you so much, Dawn, for your incredibly kind and generous words and introduction. My heart is truly filled with gratitude. Dawn, you and I have been very good friends for many years as we've worked together in our party. And like many good conservatives, we did disagree occasionally, but we always respected each other. We've been intensely loyal to our friendship and our cause, and that's what conservatives do. Sharing many laughs, sharing some tears, many dinners, and late night talks. And because of that, Dawn, you and Betty are lifelong friends to Michael and I, and we're very grateful for you. And Thank you all. I look across this room and I say thank you all. I know so many of you, it's wonderful to see your faces, to see your smiles, to see so many people that I've seen at conventions and campaigning and throughout the country. So thank you very much for your kindness and, uh, and your welcome. I know I speak for Michael as well when I say thank you for the appreciation we have felt from all of you, not only this evening, but over the last seven months. Whether in airports or restaurants, out at the mall or at EDA events, through phone calls and emails and even some social media posts, I'm hearing a strong message that our grassroots conservative memberships, the foundation of our party, you are hopeful and you are excited about the future and you are proud to be conservative. You, you are proud that we stand for fiscal responsibility, national unity, law and order, and freedom of expression and belief. Freedom. Not liberal light, but conservative. And in addition to that, literally hundreds of thousands of more Canadians have joined our party and are feeling that same optimism and excitement. So, Thank you for helping confirm to me and our entire Conservative caucus that we were on the right track by being a strong, consistent Conservative voice in all that we have said and all that we have done. My, my heart is filled with gratitude as well to my incredible caucus. First of all, my leadership team made up of Luc Berthold, my deputy leader, merci beaucoup Luc, pour le bon travail que vous avez fait. Thank you to Blaine Calkins, our whip, John Brassard, our house leader, as well as MPs Tom Kamich, Melissa Lantzman, Leanne Rood, and Warren Steinley. You are all extraordinary leaders, and I thank you. And to the rest of our caucus, including senators who work day in and day out in Ottawa and their ridings, and would come to Ottawa every week and bring advice and strategy and passion on how to deal with issues of the day. Thank you to my caucus. Thank you to our caucus chair, Scott Reed, who has done a fantastic job over the last several months. Ladies and gentlemen, our caucus is made up of so many smart, experienced, wise, and compassionate individuals. And if there's one piece of advice I want to give to the new leader, whoever it is, it's this. Respect, listen to, and trust our caucus. They will not let you down. Now, you know, every leader leaves a mark, 
and that pertains also to the, those who serve as in, in the interim capacity, leaders in the interim. And I'm thinking of people like Deb Gray. Give Deb a hand. She's doing a great job emceeing tonight. She opened the doors of Stornoway, using it as a working home and starting the wise practice of meeting frequently there with MPs, supporters, and staff to hear and understand more thoroughly what they had to say. One of Deb's marks was openness and outreach. Or the other one I'm thinking about is Rana Ambrose, my dear friend Rana. Rana took over our party after our party suffered a difficult defeat. She brought hope and optimism to our party. With a broad appeal, Rana attracted people to us, and she lifted women like me into positions of leadership, not as tokens, but because of merit. Rana is a builder who lifts people up. And then there was John Reynolds. Now, rumor has it John finally got the decaying kitchen redone at Stornoway. Nobody wanted to take the political hit, but as urban legend has it, he accidentally put his foot through a, a rotten floorboard at Stornoway, and when he did, he said, enough is enough, I'm going to do it. And he left the official opposition residence with some new floors and a sturdy, durable chopping block kitchen counter built to last. John Reynolds left his mark as a steady and experienced leader. And then there was Dr. Grant Hill. Grant was our first interim leader after Stephen Harper and Peter McKay led us to unification. Grant's mark was a solid, sober professionalism that was so critically required in the early days of a new party. And so to all of my predecessors, all of the leaders of our party, all who have left their mark, both permanent and leaders in the interim, you have our deep and respectful appreciation for the strength and the success of the party that you helped build. So, yes, go ahead, give them all a hand. We all leave a mark, and we want it to be lasting, and we want it to be a good mark. And I hope I've been able to leave my, my mark as well. I, I want to be remembered as a leader who helped bring unity and pride to our Conservative Party. I want to be remembered as a leader who helped us move away from identity politics and labeling in our party and towards unity in disagreement. Unity while still holding different views. Unity, not uniformity. So my friends, my fellow Conservatives, as I leave, I want to once again ask you, please don't allow yourself, whatever kind of Conservative you are, to be broken into groups and labelled. Do not descend into the cauldron of identity politics and division in our own party. Do the opposite. Live, talk and walk unity even when you disagree with each other, actually especially when you disagree with each other. Unity as Conservatives and unity as Canadians. I love this party. I love this party. It's, uh, it was so interesting, Dawn, as you talked about what I've done and how I started as a volunteer. And, uh, you know, I cannot imagine, I cannot believe that I stand here before you as, as your leader. It has just been an incredible experience and I feel so blessed to be able to, to be here. But to be able to tell young people the opportunity that they have, not just young people, people of all ages, to be able to get involved and make a difference for their country and in their party. So it was with mixed emotions that I announced earlier this week that I will not be seeking re-election. After 14 remarkable years and five elections, I've decided it's time to open new doors and pursue other interests and passions. But no matter where I am, my friends, or what I am doing, I will always be a proud Conservative, doing all I can for our leader and our party. And now, speaking of leader, tonight is the night 
Tonight is the night we're going to find out who our members have selected to be the next leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. I want to thank each one of the candidates, Jean, Leslin, Pierre, Roman and Scott, for putting your names forward and the great work that you and your teams have done. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I have no doubt we will support our new leader. We will buttress the new team. We will help them. We will prop them up and advise them. We'll give our new leader the chance to flourish and pave the way for a new federal conservative government. Now, I have served federally for 14 years, and on one hand, it does seem like a long time, but on the other, it really goes by in a flash. I started as a volunteer, and as I said, I'm leaving from this stage as the person in whom was bestowed the trust of leadership. And so I want to say a special thank you to Manitoba, to my constituents, to my home, to my home, to the people of Portage Lisgar. Manitobans are great people. They are resilient, innovative, compassionate, hardworking, and generous. And I want to thank all of those who supported me, not only in the last seven months, but those who helped, me, helped bring me to Ottawa in the first place. Over the last several months, a very special thank you goes out to Mr. Wayne Benson, the executive director of our party and a fellow Manitoban. Wayne came out of retirement in PEI, and he took on the job of executive director at my request during a very difficult time. In fact, it was literally when the Emergencies Act had been called. So in the literal middle of a so-called emergency, Wayne Benson came forward. What a hero he was to me. And with the help of Rob Batherson, Ian Brody, James Dodds, and a host of staff and volunteers, they guided us through this leadership race. And I want to say thank you to each one of you. To my family, my siblings, and especially my children, Lucas, Delaney, and Parker, and your children, thank you for sharing your mom and Grammy, your daughter and sister with the country. And to my husband, Michael, who has been a true partner and companion to me through this entire journey as leader. He has worked with me, he has served, and his love he gave to me and I could give to you. And I want to thank you so much, my love. And finally, again, thank you to my wonderful caucus, the members of parliament that are elected across this country to represent as conservative members of parliament. It has been the honor of my political life to have been your leader. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to all of you. What a privilege to serve you. I am grateful. I am blessed. God bless all of you. God bless Canada. And God save the King. Merci beaucoup. Well, when you're a volunteer president, there are good days and days that aren't as good. But uh, I had a great day uh, earlier this week uh, getting to do a little bit of a, uh, a backroom scheme with uh, Candace's uh, husband, Michael, and uh, my friend, uh, James Dodds, chair of Conservative Fund Canada. And uh, I don't know if the surprise got out. We tried to keep it from you, Candace. Um, but we wanted to thank Candace for her work as our leader in the interim, and her 14 years and counting of dedicated service to the people of Portage Lesgar. So here's our special announcement. On behalf of James Dodds, the chair of the Conservative Fund, 
Our party is proud to make a contribution in the name of the Honourable Candace Bergen to Turning Leaf Support Services. And please go online and find out about this amazing organization. So I think one thing that shines through about Candace Bergen is compassion. Turning Leaf Support Services is an organism of bienfaisance, chère à Candace, qui offre ses services de crise et de traitement centrés aux personnes vulnérables et marginalisées à faible et à haut risque, vivant avec une maladie mentale et des défis intellectuels, ainsi que pour le traumatisme, l'intinérance, la pauvreté, la toxicomanie, la discrimination, l'exploitation sexuelle, la société des stigmates, qui ne sont que quelques-uns des obstacles auxquels leurs participants sont confrontés chaque jour. A small token of appreciation for everything Candace Bergen has done for our party, not only since becoming a member of Parliament in 2008, but also for her tireless work since February, keeping everything running smoothly, ready for our next leader. Thank you, Candace, for everything. We should have caught you the first time. You Thank you. And one of my favorite Debisms. Way to go, girly. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Candace, for everything. Well, we're getting close to the moment that you've actually all been waiting for. We're not offended. We don't really think you came here just to see us. This is sort of like high school graduation. You know, you have to get through all the stuff, and then comes the good part. We're getting close to that moment. Valerie and I have had the honor of serving as members on LEOC. We are now 678,000. It just gets bigger and bigger all the time, the number. We are ready, focused, energized, and we're united to bring Canada back to what it can be and what it should be, and the sooner the better. We're getting ready to tap in to what we're hearing from Canadians. Canadians are telling us we want and we need change, and we tonight here are prepared to give it to Canadians. So now, on with the show. If Ian Brody hasn't done every single possible job in this party, I think he's pretty close. A long-time dedicated Conservative, he served as Prime Minister Harper's first Chief of Staff at the critical start of the Harper government. When asked to serve our party again, Ian didn't hesitate. I have known Ian for a very long time, and when I heard that he was chairing LEOC and I was asked to sit on it, I said, yes, I'll do that, and happily, because Ian was there. So I think we could agree, I hope we could agree, that this is going to be the last leadership yeah. race for a long time. Yeah. Cette course, cette course a établi un record canadien. Plus de 678 000 Canadiens sont présentement membres du Parti conservateur du Canada. Nonobstant le record, C'est beaucoup de gens qui veulent du changement. Et chaque membre provenant de tous les horizons apporte sa propre histoire, ses propres idéaux et finalement sa propre expérience et son énergie à notre parti. Nous avons la chance d'accueillir des personnes qui n'ont jamais acheté une carte de membre d'un parti politique auparavant. Chaque personne injecte une nouvelle énergie dans notre cause. Il y avait beaucoup d'intérêt de la part des membres à travers le Canada pour siéger au sein du COEC. Les personnes appelées à servir représentaient chaque région de notre pays et reflétaient la composition de notre parti et de nos membres. J'étais fière de représenter le Québec en tant que vice-président du COEC et de travailler avec le président Ian Brody et mes collègues. Veuillez accueillir le président du COEC, M. Ian Brody. Uh, 
Uh, dear friends, the membership of our Leadership Election Organizing Committee was a broad representation of our country and the membership of our party from coast to coast to coast. And I'd like to recognize that every member who served on our Leadership Committee did so as a volunteer. Every member that I served with committed untold hours to the task at hand, taking time away from their families, from their professional commitments, and from the rest of their lives to make sure that we had a fair leadership election. The process and everything that involved the running of this uh, leadership contest took place in consultation with the campaigns. Everything that went on regarding the validation of ballots, the tabulation of ballots, and later on, the counting of the results took place in the presence of scrutineers from each of the campaigns under the watchful eye of our chief returning officer and his deputy chief returning officers and from the personnel on loan from the party. Nous devons remercier les personnels du parti pour les longues heures et le dévouement. Nous tenons à leur exprimer notre gratitude ainsi qu'à leur famille for tout ce qui a permis de rendre ce processus aussi fluide pour tout le monde. Thank you to the party staff, the party volunteers who helped get us to this point this evening. It was our remarkable range of candidates, and there are thousands of organizers and volunteers from coast to coast that recruited all of these new members to our party. Each candidate and their teams and their experienced volunteers brought ideas to recruit Canadians. The party staff processed the hundreds of thousands, half a million new memberships added to our party. We got more than 670,000 ballots out to our members. We got them all back to be counted, and it all went as smoothly as possible. I want to thank the candidates and their teams for their hard work. I hope every candidate and every volunteer is proud of the work they did during this race. I would also like to thank National Council for the confidence that they showed in our committee and our team. And along with that, our thanks to Candace Bergen for her extraordinary support and her personal friendship to me. I would be remiss if I did not thank my predecessors as LEOC co-chairs of the past, Dan Nolan and Lisa Raitt, for their extraordinary work and for the inheritance of the expertise and track record that we got when we got our flying start. Thankfully, together, we met the challenge of a record-breaking membership along with the trust of our members. At this time, I'd like to uh, invite my fellow uh, volunteer, Don Nightingale, our Chief Returning Officer and a Director of the Conservative Fund Canada, and my dear friend Wayne Benson, the Executive Director of the party, to come forward and review some of the relevant rules and outline the role of Deloitte. Don and Wayne are both former three-term national councillors of our party, and uh, like me, somehow when the call comes, they just don't know how to say no. I can testify that they are both extraordinary loyal and committed members of our party. They put in tireless hours to deliver this race, and I am personally thankful that they did agree to serve when they were asked. Don and Wayne, please. not to be nervous. I remember well that evening in February when I answered the phone. Hi, Wayne. It's Candace. I need you to come to Ottawa as executive director of the party. This was not how I planned to spend the next seven months of my retirement. I inherited a staff at headquarters that for the most part, had been working from home for the better part of the previous two years. Personally, I had a very steep learning curve ahead of me. However, I will say this. 
without the commitment, dedication, and unwavering support of our staff, we would not be where we are today. <laughs> staff stepped up each and every day, faced the challenges that come with any leadership contest with determination and resiliency and got the job done as they had already done twice before. But let's not forget, this time our membership tripled in size and every task along the way, yes. Every task along the way was similarly magnified. Every single member of our party needs to know how valuable our staff is and was to this undertaking. I am fortunate and honored to have become part of their team. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart. We could not have done it without each and every one of you. Well, thank you, Wayne. Uh, when you asked me to serve on your team as uh, the chief returning officer, I said to myself, this is going to be really interesting but I had no idea how interesting it turned out to be. I didn't foresee, and I don't think any of us foresaw, the unprecedented interest of Canadians in this leadership race, and the historic numbers. Is my microphone not working? Let me go here. And the historic uh, membership numbers in the Conservative Party. Oh, you're right, Don. It's been quite a ride. And I want to add to that, despite the many challenges we faced over the past seven months, it has been an absolute pleasure to work with you and Ian on this leadership race. I think we were a really good team. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree with that, Wayne. It was a real pleasure. I'd like to say a few words, ladies and gentlemen, about my duties as Chief Returning Officer. The duties of the Chief Returning Officer in this leadership race are primarily to monitor the process to ensure compliance with our Constitution and with the rules and procedures determined by the Leadership Election Organizing Committee. And I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone of a couple of the more important rules in this race. First, our Constitution requires that this race will be conducted on a one-member, one-vote point system. Well, what does that mean? It means that each of the 338 ridings in Canada are allocated 100 points. The Constitution, however, states that only ridings that have achieved a minimum of 100 valid votes cast will receive the full complement of 100 points. Leadership candidates are allocated points based on the percentage of votes they receive in each writing. 30% of the votes means 30 points. To win, a leadership candidate must attain a majority of points from across the country. If no candidate receives a majority of points on the first ballot, we will hold a second ballot. This is what is called a single transferable ballot. On the second ballot, the candidate receiving the fewest points is dropped, and that candidate's points are reallocated to the second preference, with the vote totals, or the point totals rather, being recalculated for all the candidates. This process is repeated until one candidate receives a majority of points and is declared the winner. I would like to add that the point totals at the close of voting are verified by Don as CRO and independently by Deloitte LLP. The results are then reported to Ian, Chair of LEOC, and Ian will then announce the results here at this podium. One excerpt from our Constitution in part states, National Council or the Leadership Election Organizing Committee 
will engage an independent third party to count the ballots in the votes specified. LEOC, pursuant to their rules, appointed Deloitte to monitor and verify the leadership election process and result. And then Deloitte LLP was retained by Conservative Fund Canada, the Leadership Election Organizing Committee, and the Chief Returning Officer to act as an independent advisor and observer for the 2022 leadership election. Conservative Fund Canada will be, and was, solely responsible for the provision of oversight and staff for carrying out activities adhering to all applicable election rules, including the credentials rules and counting rules. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. Ian and I and Wayne are going to walk over to the results room and obtain the vote results for round one. Assuming everything goes according to plan, we will be back here on stage in 10 to 15 minutes with the results. They, they have not been calculated yet. They're ready to press the button on the computer and give us the results. So don't go away. Would everybody please take their seats? I just want to. I just want to say we would have been up here much sooner, except the elevator was in use. Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, could you take your seats, please? Mesdames et Messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, j'ai des résultats, I have some results. It's my great privilege to announce the results. Nous avons un nouveau chef. We have a new leader, the next Prime Minister of Canada, la première Premier Minister de Canada, the Honourable Pierre Polyevre and Anna Polyevre.
I begin? Thank you very much. Before I begin introducing my husband, allow me to express my sadness at the passing of our queen. May she rest in peace. Long live the king. My husband and I, thank you. My husband and I share the same values, although our background is a little different. Mon mari et moi, nous partageons les mêmes valeurs, malgré que notre parcours est un peu différent. I was born in Caracas, Venezuela, and my family immigrated to Canada in 1995 in a working class neighborhood in the east end of Montreal. Je suis née à Caracas, Venezuela, et ma famille émigré ici en 1995 à Montréal, dans le quartier de Chalaga Maisonneuve et puis pointe aux trente En tant que mujer latina, es un placer y un orgullo de poder ser una voz fuerte para el pueblo latino y para muchos inmigrantes. My father, he went from wearing business suits and managing a bank to jumping on the back of a pickup truck to collect fruits and vegetables because that's what he had to do to feed his family. Mon père est passé de porter des complets et à gérer une banque en montant à l'arrière d'une camionnette avec des vêtements usagés afin de ramasser des fruits et des légumes dans les champs car c'est ce qu'il devait faire pour nourrir notre famille. The Galindo family present here tonight taught us hard work and that there is no greater dignity than to provide for your own family. La famille Galindo, la famille Galindo présente ici ce soir, nous a enseigné qu'il faut travailler fort et qu'il n'y a pas plus grande dignité que de subvenir aux besoins de votre famille. Years later, here we are. My father is a small business owner, and my siblings went all from their humble beginnings, including me working at McDonald's, <laughs> to being a renovator, a registered practical nurse, a proud member of the Canadian Air Forces, and here I am, la petite fille de pointe de standing in front of you and by my husband's side. Dios mío, quien se lo hubiera imaginado? Mon Dieu, qui aurait imaginé ça? My husband's story is a little different. He was born in Calgary to a teenage mother who had just lost her own mother. She gave Pierre for adoption to two wonderful school teachers from Saskatchewan. And again, they're all present here tonight. L'histoire de mon mari est un peu différente. Il est né à Calgary d'une mère adolescente qui venait tout juste de perdre sa propre mère. Elle a donné Pierre en adoption à deux merveilleux professeurs d'école élémentaire provenant de la Saskatchewan et ils sont présents ici ce soir. So, we both grew up the same way. Our families living paycheck to paycheck, knowing that filling your tank of gas, it is not a luxury, but a way of transportation to go to work and to bring your children to school. <laughs> Donc, nous avons grandi très similairement, nos familles vivant toujours en attendant le prochain chèque de paie, en sachant que faire le plein d'essence n'est pas un luxe, mais un moyen de transport pour aller travailler ou amener vos enfants à l'école. So, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, a principled man, a good son, a wonderful father, and a loving husband. This, this is the new leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, and your prochain Premier Ministre, my husband, Pierre Poilievre. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Merci Anaïda. Je t'aime. I begin on behalf of everyone here, expressing my sorrow 
at the passing of our beloved Queen. Two tiny words, the Queen. Yet on every continent, those two words conjure up more than a picture. They also express an idea, the idea of decency and duty. Elizabeth II, though she might have recoiled at the thought, was the world's most famous woman. Yet she was our queen, our sovereign, for almost half of our nation's existence. In her 22 visits here, yes indeed, in her 22 visits here and her dealings with 13 prime ministers, she exhibited the virtues we most cherish, div dignity, civility, humility, candor, and above all else, service. That's why her death, though not unexpected, is nonetheless shocking. We felt we knew her. We felt that her strengths were ours, the strengths of a country which by good fortune and God's grace we call home. And that, perhaps, is why I feel a small catch in my throat when I utter the words that no leader has stated in this country for over seven decades. God save the King. Tonight begins the journey to replace an old government that costs you more and delivers you less with a new government that puts you first, your paycheck, your retirement, your home, your country. By tackling liberal inflation, we'll put you back in control of your life and your money. Le, le travail, le travail commence ce soir pour remplacer ce vieux gouvernement qui vous coûte plus cher et qui vous apporte moins avec un nouveau gouvernement qui vous place en premier votre chèque de paie, votre retraite, votre maison, votre pays. En nous attaquant à l'inflation, nous vous redonnons le contrôle de votre argent et de votre vie. And it is about you. This is not my victory, it is yours, and I have so many people to thank. Merci à ceux et celles qui m'ont soutenu et qui se sont portés volontaires pour cette victoire. Merci aux autres candidats d'avoir renouvelé notre parti. Thank you to Scott Akerson for running on ideas like simplifying and lowering taxes. Thank you very much, Scott. Thank you to Roman Baber for standing up for and making sacrifices for freedom for everybody. And thank you, thank you to his wonderful partner, Nancy, for championing children with autism. Thank you. Thank you to Leslin Lewis for standing for family, faith, and freedom. And to her husband, John, for supporting her along the way. Yes. And thank you. And thank you to Jean Charest for your service to our country. and for ensuring that we still have a country that is united in which we can call ourselves home. Thank you for fighting for Canada, Jean, when the nation's back was against the wall in the 1995 referendum. You stood with courage and passion. You defended our country, and our, our nation will ever be grateful for your work. Thank you. Absolutely. Ça fait à peu près 40 ans que Jean est en politique, au niveau provincial et fédéral. Et c'est dur. Mais souvent, les vrais héros, ce n'est pas les candidats, c'est 
leur famille. And that's why I recognize Michelle. For those four decades, there have been countless occasions when her husband was fighting causes on behalf of all of us, uh, when you had to carry the extra load and take the extra sacrifice, countless invisible sacrifices. And we as a nation, we as a party, we thank you, Michelle. Merci beaucoup. To supporters of all of these fine candidates, I open my arms to you. Now, today, we are one party serving one country. Most importantly, thank you to my brilliant and beautiful wife. Merci à ma belle et brillante épouse. Pour avoir été mon ancre, mon pilier, tout au long de cette folle aventure, tu as rendu cela possible. Tu es ma meilleure amie et l'amour de ma vie. Ah, oui. À la famille d'Anaïda qui a pris soin de nos enfants lorsque nous étions sur la route, vous avez rendu cela possible. Muchas gracias a la familia de mi esposa y por su contribución a Canadá. <laughs> so that's all the Spanish I speak. If you ever come over to our house for one of our grand family gatherings, it's usually 20 uh, Latinos and Latinas arguing, telling jokes, telling stories in Spanish, and one guy standing around having no idea what anyone else is saying. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's family not only raised this incredible woman, but they came to this country from Venezuela with almost nothing. And they have since started businesses, raised kids, served in the military, and like so many immigrant families, built our country. And I want to thank, yes. I want to thank my brother Patrick, my father Don, his partner Ross, my mother Marlene, and even my biological mother Jackie is here today. Yes. We're a complicated and mixed up bunch, like most families, like our country. I want to thank my parents, though, in particular. I want to thank my parents, two school teachers who adopted me from a teenage mother. They taught me that it didn't matter where I came from, but where I was going. It didn't matter who I knew, but what I could do. That is the hope I want my kids to inherit. But that, that hope has melted into worry for many. Today, people feel like they've lost control of their pocketbooks and their lives. The cost of government is driving up the cost of living. This government, this liberal government, has doubled our national debt, adding more debt than all previous governments combined. That means another half trillion dollars bidding up the cost of the goods we buy and the interest we pay. Inflationary taxes increase those costs further. Now, they plan to triple the carbon tax on gas, heat, and everything else. Le coût du gouvernement augmente le coût de la vie. Ce gouvernement a ajouté à notre dette nationale plus que tous les autres gouvernements dans l'histoire de notre pays. Ça veut dire 500 milliards de dollars qui ajoutent à l'inflation et aux augmentations des taux d'intérêt. C'est le gouvernement le plus cher dans notre histoire. It is the most expensive government in history. And the more they spend, the more things cost. The result? Families downgrade their diets to cover the 10% year-over-year jump in food prices. Seniors delay their retirements and watch their life savings evaporate with inflation. 30-year-olds who did everything we asked them to do, got degrees, 
worked hard, are trapped in 400 square foot apartments, or worse, their parents' basements because house prices have doubled under this government. And those who do own homes are paying more interest on their mortgages, even though this government promised interest rates would not rise for years. Les mères monoparentales mettent de l'eau dans le lait de leurs enfants pour pouvoir se permettre la hausse de 10 de la nourriture d'une année à l'autre. Les personnes âgées voient leurs économies s'évaporer avec l'inflation. Des jeunes de 30 ans qui ont fait tout ce que nous avons demandé d'eux obtenir un diplôme, travailler fort, vivre dans le sous-sol de leurs parents parce que les prix des maisons ont doublé. Et ceux qui ont une maison paient davantage d'intérêt pour leur hypothèque. No wonder people are worried. Most are lucky to be just getting by. Many are falling behind. And there are people in this country who are just hanging on by a thread. These are citizens of our country. We are their servants. We owe them hope. They don't need a government that sneers at them, looks down on them, calls them names. They don't need a government to run their lives. They need a government that can run a passport office. They need a prime minister who hears them and offers them hope that they can again afford to buy a home, a car, pay their bills, afford food, have a secure retirement, and God forbid, even achieve their dreams if they work hard. They need a prime minister who will restore that hope, and I will be that prime minister. We will rekindle the hope that people's paychecks and savings can again buy a decent life. We will make government affordable so that life is affordable. We'll cap spending and cut waste to reverse inflationary deficits and taxes. That includes axing new taxes on your paycheck, gas, heat, and other essentials. It means fighting climate change with technology and not with taxes. We will restore hope that hard work will again pay off. Do you know that today, if a single mom with three kids earning $55,000 a year goes out and earn another dollar, she loses 80 cents of it to taxes and clawbacks, so she can't get ahead. I will reform programs and cut taxes so that when that single mother and people like her earn more, they keep more, and hard work always pays off in this country. Nous redonnons l'espoir que le travail devient payant de nouveau en réformant les programmes et en réduisant les impôts pour que les gens gardent l'argent qu'ils gagnent pour leur famille plutôt que de tout perdre au gouvernement. Instead of creating more cash, let's create more of what cash buys. Think of it. If you've got 10 loaves of bread and $10, well, it's a buck a loaf. If you double the number of dollars to 20, but you still have 10 loaves of bread, well, then it's $2. You see, spending more doesn't get us more. We need to make more. So instead of doubling the money, let's double the bread. Let's, yes. Let's remove the government gatekeepers to build more homes, grow more food, and produce more energy right here in Canada. We need to restore the hope of home ownership. Right now, youth and newcomers can't get a home because local government gatekeepers block housing with heavy fees and long delays for building permits, leaving us with the fewest houses per capita of any country in the G7, even though we have the most land to build on. A poly of government will require big cities that want federal infrastructure money to speed up and lower the cost of permits to and to approve affordable housing around all transit stations so that our young people can live there and don't even need to afford a car. We, we will also we'll sell off 15 percent of the underutilized 37,000 federal buildings to turn them into housing and use the proceeds of sale to reduce our deficit. In other words, stop printing money, start building homes for our people. 
Speaking, speaking of homes, we must make stuff here at home again, here in Canada. Look, trade is great. Trade is just great. But we learned during COVID that we can't count on the rest of the world to take care of us. That is why we must be the best place on earth for workers and businesses to build factories, mine critical minerals for electric cars, and develop other resources. Right now, we lose wages because we import 130,000 barrels of overseas oil, mostly from dictators, every single day, even though we have the third largest supply right here in Canada. And that is all because our government prefers dirty dictator oil to responsible Canadian energy. We will repeal this government's anti-energy laws and replace them with a law that protects our environment, consults First Nations, and gets things built. We will greenlight Newfoundland and Labrador's planned increase in oil production, which will allow us to fully replace every single barrel of oil we're importing from abroad. And with, within five years, we will set the goal to end dictator oil in Canada altogether. Et au lieu d'aider Poutine à vendre son gaz naturel à l'Europe pour financer sa guerre contre l'Ukraine, un gouvernement poilièvre soutiendra des projets comme GNL Québec. Nous savons tous que les Québécois ont une source d'énergie propre, l'hydroélectricité, qu'ils peuvent utiliser pour liquéfier le gaz naturel sans émission. L'Europe a besoin d'acheter du gaz. Voici le choix. Certains préfèrent que l'argent du gaz naturel finance les armes de guerre de Poutine. Moi, je veux que cet argent-là finance les chèques de paie pour Jean-Marc Tremblay, le soudeur du Saguenay. We will greenlight mining and manufacturing of minerals like lithium, cobalt, and copper to make electric cars and batteries. We will allow for technology to be unleashed here instead of our money to go to foreign dictatorships. And that also includes repatriating food production by standing with our farmers here at home. This this government's high energy taxes and proposed fertilizer cuts will only drive food production abroad to more polluting first foreign jurisdictions, which would have to then burn fuel to ship, train, and truck that food back to us. But didn't we learn how irresponsible it was to rely on the rest of the world to provide us with our essentials during COVID? A poly of government will repeal these taxes and fertilizer mandates to get out of the way and off the backs of our farmers so that we can grow affordable food, feed our people, and be the breadbasket of the world. We will restore to First Nations more control of their land, money, and decision-making, and those communities that want to develop resources and invite commerce to fight poverty will have an ally rather than an obstacle in me. We must remove other unneeded barriers by axing the disastrous Arrive Can app. And and by ending the remaining COVID vaccine mandates to let people work and travel freely. Thank you. We will, br we will bring hope. We will bring hope to doctors, nurses, engineers, and others who are immigrants to this country but are blocked from working in their professions for no other reason than that they come from another country. We'll team up with provinces to guarantee that within 60 days, an immigrant applying to work in their profession will get a yes or no based on their tested abilities, not based on where they come from. We'll back up 30, we will back up 30 small, 30,000 small study loans for those in need of time off work to study up to the Canadian standard. Enough talking, remove the gatekeepers to get more doctors, more nurses, more engineers, and more inflation-proof paychecks for our brilliant immigrants.
and we will restore the hope of safe streets, a hope that has turned into fear in all too many places. After killings in Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, and most recently, Saskatchewan. Weakened laws allow chronic and violent reoffenders out for, of prison early at great danger to our people. Instead of spending a fortune targeting licensed and law-abiding, trained and tested firearms owners, Conservatives will bolster the laws, bolster the borders, and put the real criminals in jail. Et nous redonnerons de l'espoir aux Québécois afin qu'ils puissent reprendre le contrôle de leurs décisions et de leur vie. Au, au lieu d'être contrôlés par un gouvernement centralisateur et woke à Ottawa. Vous savez, vous savez, vous savez, la langue française m'occupe une place toute spéciale dans mon cœur. Mon père, qui a des origines canadiennes françaises et qui vient d'un village francescois, m'a transmis l'importance de préserver le français dès mon plus jeune âge. En, rendi en grandissant à Calgary, malheureusement, j'avais trop peu d'occasion de, de le parler. Donc, j'ai beaucoup de travail à faire. Maintenant, je continue de perfectionner cette langue que j'aime, langue fondatrice de notre pays. Avec mon épouse, une Montréalaise, nous, transmet nous, nous transmettons à notre tour, à nos enfants qui vont dans les garderies, Francophone. Nos petits enfants, euh, Baby Cruz et Valentina, ils auront la langue française comme première langue, et la deuxième langue, évidemment, espagnol, et après ça, troisième langue, tr langue l'anglais. Je vais aller plus loin en parlant du Québec. Je dirais que les conservateurs de partout au pays ont beaucoup d'apprendre des Québécois. Les Québécois défendent leur, leur patrimoine, leur culture et leur langue. Ils ne s'excusent pas. La nation québécoise tient tête au wokisme. Mon gouvernement, va, mon gouvernement ne va pas se mettre le nez dans tout. Un État fédéral plus petit va faire grandir des citoyens du Québec et du Canada. Small government makes for big citizens who own their homes, build their dreams, raise their families, look out for their neighbors, and earn powerful paychecks and savings free from inflation and overtaxation. We will restore Canada's promise in a country where it doesn't matter who you love or if your name is Smith or Singh, Martin or Mohammed, Chang or Charles, a country where the dreamer, the farmer, the worker, the entrepreneur, the survivor, the fighter, the ones who get knocked down but keep getting back up and keep going can achieve their purpose, a country where the son of a teenage mother adopted by two teachers can dare to run for Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> In the words of the great Canadian Prime Minister John Diefenbaker, I am a Canadian, a free Canadian, free to speak without fear, free to worship God in my own way, free to stand for what I think right, free to oppose what I believe wrong, free to choose those who shall govern my country, this heritage of freedom I pledge to uphold for myself and all of mankind. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. <laughs>